On today's show, FCA is running out of manufacturing capacity and needs another plant to make Jeeps. The Honda Ridgeline is losing ground in the mid-size pickup segment, and Rinspeed unveils a wild modular autonomous vehicle. All that and more coming right up on AutoLine Daily. This is AutoLine Daily, the voice of the global automotive industry. At a time when General Motors is talking about closing assembly plants, FCA is going to open one. The Detroit News reports that FCA is going to retool an idled engine plant in Detroit to make three-row Jeep Grand Cherokees instead. FCA is doing this because it's essentially out of manufacturing capacity. Last month, its plants were running at 92% of capacity, while GM ran at only 72%, and Ford was running at an average of 81%. With the introduction of the Jeep Gladiator, the return of the Ford Ranger, and with Hyundai working on a production version of the Santa Cruz, the midsize pickup segment is about to get very crowded. But let's look at how the models that are currently on sale stack up against each other. The Toyota Tacoma completely dominates its competition and is outselling the second place Chevy Colorado by over 100,000 units, and that's through the first 11 months of the year in the U.S. There's another big drop-off to the third-place Nissan Frontier, but it's impressive to see such an old vehicle still increasing its sales. The GMC Canyon is next and is up 8% so far this year. But poor Honda. Consumers just aren't responding to the Ridgeline, and it's the only midsize pickup whose sales are down in 2018. The segment as a whole is up double digits this year, so it suggests there's room for more players. Euro NCAP, the organization that crash tests new vehicles for the European market, is scolding FCA over the safety of its vehicles. The Fiat Panda and the Jeep Wrangler just received zero and one star respectively in its latest round of tests. The Panda got dinged because it only features a seatbelt reminder as part of its safety assist features. And the all-new Wrangler got a low score because the only form of driver assistance features it has is a seatbelt reminder and a driver speed limiter. The Euro Incap says it's disappointing that a new vehicle like the Wrangler doesn't have automatic emergency braking or lane keep assist. Still to come, a look at a wild autonomous ride-sharing concept from Rinspeed. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone Tires, your journey, our passion. Dow Automotive Systems, advanced materials that deliver better results. Lear, a global leader in automotive seating and electrical systems. And by Exxon Mobil. Earlier this week, Chevy took the wraps off the new Silverado HD, which featured a very polarizing front end. Well, it turns out that was only one of its styles. Each of the five trims will get its own distinct design, features, and technology. Now the company is showing off what the the top-of-the-line high country will look like. As you can see, the front end isn't as bold as the LT model it showed off earlier this week. But unfortunately, Chevy didn't reveal any more details about the high country. The new Silverado HD goes on sale in mid-2019. A few months back, Swiss company Rinspeed teased a concept it will show off at CES next month. And now we're getting more details. Called the MicroSnap, it's an evolution of the Snap concept it displayed previously. It's an electric, autonomous, ride-sharing vehicle that features a chassis that can be separated from the body. That way, the chassis, which houses all the components and technology, can be swapped out and recycled once that tech becomes outdated. Both vehicles carry passengers, But the MicroSnap, which is the same size as a Renault Twizy, can only hold two people. And it's been designed to be a just-in-time delivery vehicle. As part of that delivery service, Rinspeed is demonstrating how an automated robot station can swap out the bodies carrying the cargo to handle all the orders. It's a pretty cool concept, but there's a lot more features that we don't have time to dive into. So if you'd like to learn more, just look for the link in today's transcript or in the description box below. Coming up next, a look at why Jeep chose the name Gladiator for its new pickup. 
Lear Connexus is the new application suite in vehicle connectivity designed to deliver over-the-air software updates and more from Lear Corporation's eSystems, leaders in power and data management. When rumors started flying that Jeep was planning on introducing a pickup truck, it was assumed that it would be named the Scrambler in honor of the past model. But the company surprised people when it chose the name Gladiator instead. On last week's AutoLine After Hours, we were joined by Scott Talon, Jeep's marketing director, and Mark Allen, the head of Jeep Design. And they discussed the debate inside the company over the name. It was a lengthy process. Uh, it started months ago. Um, we were all involved. We all have opinions, strong opinions, and, and, and varying opinions too. And then ultimately, um, you know, we have to come to a point where a decision has to be made. Um, we had fun debates, spirited debates, and, and it, it was broad reaching. There was a lot of input, um, but you know, we always look to the history as inspiration, John, not only for the vehicles, but uh, the naming as well. Well, you know, we talked about the earlier ones and they all had different names. So this is completely different from them. I guess it makes sense to put a new name on it. Gladiator yeah. was the full size heavy duty truck though. And okay. oddly enough, we found this out because I didn't know this and I know a lot about Jeep, but it was never badged Gladiator, the, that truck. It had it said uh, like you had to open the door and look on the doorpost at Gladiator. And of course in the, the press materials and the advertising, but never on the truck to say Gladiator. Well, see, I'm glad you brought yeah. that up because I don't remember the name Gladiator no, from back no. then at all. And it yeah. came and then went away. It, they, they dropped it, and then later on it was just J10, J20, that kind of a thing. So it's alphanumeric. But, uh, and we're not going to go there. We're going to put names on the vehicles. Gladiator, um, it, it came about, though, we wanted it to just signify the real truck. Scrambler was kind of a play truck. And the Comanche, which was honestly my favorite, like, uh, but it was... Um, a, a much smaller, lighter duty truck. So Gladiator was full man, right? So yeah, full beast. <laughs> and for more about the new Gladiator pickup, you can watch that entire show right now on our website, autoline.tv, or just look for it on our YouTube channel. But that's it for today. Thanks for watching and have a great weekend. Wards is the industry leader for news, data, and analysis. That's why companies across the globe subscribe to our premium service, maybe even your own. Log in for subscriber access now. Check your company's intranet for details and rely on wardsauto.com to keep you informed.